Hello and uh, welcome along to a quick introduction to photo printing. So today I've got to run off a couple of prints for a client. Uh, somebody just placed an order for some on my uh, website. So I thought I would take the opportunity to show you some of the basic printing settings in order to get good results. Uh, these are the settings I've been using for the last couple of years. They haven't really failed me, sort of touching wood here. As uh, I say, it's uh, one of those things I really, really enjoy. Printing for me is the final part of the process. I am actually going to be setting up some workshops soon, sort of explaining and showing you the benefits of printing and taking you through the settings and stuff like that as well. So it should be a nice sort of hands-on experience for you to come away with something good from the end of a session as well. But looking at this session here, as well, uh, it's just to take you through how to get everything set up. So, the order that has come through was for three A4 prints with a white border around them as well. So, I'm going to show you how to set up the white border around the actual print itself and how everything's going to be scaled down to uh, A4 in size. So, for argument's sake, this image here is going to be well, the whole image is going to be printed out of 300 dpi. Um, so the first things we really need to be doing is getting our whole image that we're going to be printing sized, um, and it needs to be it needs to be to the correct size that we're going to be printing with as well. So the shortcuts, everything with Photoshop, as you're aware of, but I'll just use the um, the file menus at the top here as well. So first thing we need to do, click on our image size, and we need to be making everything to the size we need it to be. So resolution, as I said, we're going to be printing at 300. Tends to be what I normally use. Make sure it's on pixels per inch as well the uh, file size itself as well so we're working for width to start off with so width's going to be a4 paper because it's just easier for when you're working with the canvas which i'll show you in a second so 297 because we're working in millimeters and it's coming in at 210.01 so we can live with the extra bit of excess on there no human eye is going to be able to see that slight little bit of difference on there as well uh, double check 300 on here as well so we're quite happy with what we got on there as well so we click on OK it's now going to resize the image the size that we needed to be on there as well and from here we now need to jump up to file and select new because we need to make ourselves a canvas which is going to be the white border around the image as well and this is just a quick way I've always found to be able to get everything going so first thing we need to do in here is, is click on pixels on here we're working in millimeters I tend to work always the same as well so width 297 on here because uh, we are working on a landscape orientation on here uh, sorry yeah 297 and then we want 210 on here and again making sure our pixels are 300 if the pixels don't match the canvas to the actual uh, image that we've just resized you're going to get a discrepancy between the two uh, one will look larger than the other it's not going to be quite right uh, for everything to be sort of linked between the two as well uh, and always Adobe RGB 98 on here as well so click create also and white on here because we want a white background as well so that's quite sort of self-explanatory on there as well click on here for create we made ourselves a lovely little uh, sort of canvas to work with on here as well so that's on here and uh, we want to jump onto the file previous which is our actual image and quick shortcut to select the canvas on here control A C so just control for select and then all select all and then copy on there jump back onto the canvas and then control V now that's completely filled up the canvas which you can see is still on the background on here just toggle that on and off you can see that's on here so I'm happy that that's there and that's good to be going so what we can then do drag the corner down so this is not going to come out of shape it's going to stay in the ratio that we set it all up to as well it's not going to distort it's not going to stretch any of the edges uh, you'd have to hold down I think it's the shift key I think to make that happen and uh, we can start to see the sort of relative sort of size that we're going to get on here as well so I just go for I on here and you can see here we're starting to snap in you see the little pink lines if you look on here and up here you'll see the pink lines and it's it's like a magnet it's snapping into place it's anchoring it into place where it's bang on in the middle as well so i know this print here is it's going to be on a4 paper and when we're looking on the screen here so i'm working on a 27 inch screen as well i can tell that border there is pretty much going to be 
about right for where I am there as well. Um, like I say, with all these things, it's always good to always work off a template as well. So once you've set this up once, save this, and then every single time you can just open up this, uh, open up this PSD file, and you've got your canvas already all set up as well. If you're happy with the border that you got going all the way around here as well, open up your image in in uh, in Photoshop, and then just resize it using the same settings again. Drop it on here and just marry it up. To the same size you've got on here turn off the previous uh, layer on here so if, if for argument's sake if this is another new image so a c we can then uh, just quickly drop that in here and then obviously save that one there so we can just drop that in there there we go save that in there so we've got another new image that's just for argument's sake here and control v and then we can just resize that down so we can see when it starts getting to the size of the other image on there and then and so you can then just start to toggle you, you start building up your layers so it really speeds up your workflow as well but we don't need that one on there for now so we'll get rid of that one on there so back to what we're sort of doing on here so I'm really happy with um, with this the image how it's sort of sitting just like that as well it's for me it sort of lines up exactly how we need it to be as well and from there, that's pretty much good to print. So I know all the colours are correct, what they need to be on here. I've proofed this image so many times uh, for printing as well. It's a very popular photo. It's from Southwold. Everybody knows Southwold as well. It wasn't the best of sunrises, but there's a nice bit of colour in there. Something that breaks up the sky as well. So we need to be uh, jumping into Photoshop just to be making a few changes as well. And it's in the print settings, sorry, in Photoshop as well. So print. In here and the main thing we need to just be doing is making sure our paper size is matching everything else as well so we need to be double checking that working from sort of top to bottom really we'll quickly go through these ones here as well so the first thing to make sure is Photoshop manages colors there's no point telling your printer to do everything or take down Photoshop to tell your printer to do everything and then you then leave that on printer manages colors that's just giving the printer free reign to do whatever it wants and it's not going to marry up how you want everything to be as well so Photoshop manages colors on here printer profile as well very very important as well that you get this correct as well so if you look inside the paper you buy from Permajet uh, it will tell you what one of these you want to be selecting so you load them all up in here as well and it's pretty straightforward I'm using Oyster paper Oyster 271 uh, so I know this is the correct one on here so Oyster PPPSG you'll, you'll understand what that means in a second as well so we select that one on there uh, coming down here the paper size is all correct on here as well so I'm happy with that as well so printer obviously if you've got a few printers I've got like a little desktop one I use for documents and stuff as well uh, so make sure you've got the right printer selected on here as well and it's telling us here remember to disable the printer colors management in the print settings dialog box or whatever is that eh? well we can jump into here and find out so printer settings in here so when we come into the print settings in here first thing I always double check is A4 paper so I tend to print on A4, A3 and A3 plus so things can get changed around quite a bit <clears throat> it's always worthwhile just double checking you got the right one on there as well and then we need to double check our media type as well uh, so to jump into here in the photo papers you can see you've got a fair few selections here these are just working out the different kinds of finishes you've got matte semi glosses you've got lusters all different on here and I remember before I said there's a PPPSG which you can just see here photo paper premium semi gloss so it'll actually tell you in the pack of paper which one you want to be using so make sure you select that as well and then the high quality as well so this is another one of the settings higher standard as well I tend to always go with the high setting um, I've been led to believe that the high quality is going to prioritize the print speed so it's going to prioritize the print quality over the speed so it'll take longer to do a print uh, but you should get a, a nicer finish not that you can really notice by by the human eye. Uh, I've looked at the same print done on standard and high. I can't really see the difference, but if the setting's in there to be doing it, might as well go for it as well. Uh, standard, I believe, is it goes 
it will print going as the head goes from left to right across the paper. High, I believe, only prints when it goes one way, then it brings itself back, then does it again as well. So that, to me, that's, I say, I'm in no rush to get printing. If it is going to give me that tiny bit more quality, I'd be happy to uh, give that a whirl on there as well. So the main bits we then need to be changing to, uh, as well is print uh, preview before printing. Always have that selected on there as well. Uh, I'll show you what happens to that in a minute as well. So we want to be jumping into on here on main as well. And in here again, it's telling us the media type. We're using the rear tray, which is the back tray on the printer, which is standard for the, uh, the Pro 10s that I use as well. And then in manual on here, make sure you've selected manual. And then you want to click on set. And then you then want to come into here as well. And you want to select, so all these need to be on zero as well. Matching on here. This is a really important one. You need to click on none on here. Uh, with none selected, you need to click OK. And then on here as well, that's then going to go on to OK as well, because we're happy with that as well. And uh, from there, we should then be really sort of good to go as well. So we've done all the settings on there as well. Uh, just going back onto that last little setting I said I'll talk to you about as well. So in here, preview before printing. This is just a little fail stop for me. When I jump around between one paper and the other, the A4, A3, A3 Plus, uh, it can be quite easy sometimes just to forget one setting uh, for a paper size. And this is just one last stop just to make sure that everyone's happy. I know what I'm seeing. Uh, on here is absolutely representational of what I'm going to be printing as is what's on here as well I'm very very happy that I've double checked all the work on here uh, So the last thing I want to be doing is making a mistake on the size of the paper and if you've been printing on a3 paper or vice versa if you've been printing on a4 paper and then you haven't changed one of the settings you then end up printing in the corner of a sheet of a3 plus paper because you haven't sized something right what happens now is when you click on prints it brings up the proofing it's a bit oversaturated it's, it's a very basic um, preview on here but you can see that we've filled the border in here correctly that is as we're expecting to see the actual image as well so I'm very very happy with how that's going to go on there and from there it's just a case of hitting print and again you can give it one last check on here A4 I really want you printing in A4 the paper type is selected correctly on here as well and from on here as well I'm pretty much good to go with what we can see on there as well so from there we can press the start button and it will start taking the print it's going to take a couple of minutes to print out as well but as always it's uh, it's one of those things it's one of the final part of the process for me I love printing I try to do just do one or two prints a week if I can uh, sometimes for myself sometimes for clients and every time I see one of those prints coming out I find it just as just just can't wait to see how it's going to look. It's always nice to print a new work that you've just been out and shot as well. And uh, yeah, it's just nice just to hold that print and see that detail that you don't you don't see that detail that you see in the screen. So it is really important just to be able to enjoy those last little bits like that as well. So. I say I'm going to hit this print button now, get the print going, and uh, I've got a couple more to do for a client as well. But uh, as always, thanks ever so much for checking out the tutorial today. I hope it's helped somebody, and I really, really hope you've been able to maybe answer a few printing questions, why you're getting stuck with colours and stuff like that on the printing as well. And uh, yeah, like I say, if you've got any suggestions for stuff you'd like to see me covering in the uh, in these sort of editing sessions, feel free to drop that in the comments as always. And as, and as always, hit the subscribe button. Thanks ever so much. Take care. Goodbye.